everybody. We're here with the fan show talking to my friend Jennifer Nielsen. Say hi, hi Jennifer. Hello everyone readers. Hello readers. Wow, you're the first one to greet our audience as readers. Thank you very much for recognizing. They are all readers. That's why you're here. That is awesome. Absolutely. Now Jennifer, they're also here to learn about you. So we want to know some stuff like where are you from? <laughs> I, uh, I live in Morgan, Utah, which is kind of the mountain areas of Utah. Very small town. There's more chickens than people. Whoa. So do, so do the chickens kind of regulate policy in your town? Uh, no, no. The chickens have to do as they're told um, by the cows, of what? course. I am an author. And do you like being an author? It is the best job. I get to make up stories, and if I write them down, then uh, people are going to read those books and those stories come alive. It is the best of jobs. And how early did you start writing? You know, I think I was always writing, but I didn't get serious about it till I was about 11 years old, about sixth grade. Yeah. And did anybody encourage you in sixth grade to like, did they say, this is great, you should keep doing this? You know, when I was uh, growing up, I'd never met an author. I'd never seen an author. I didn't think about authors as real people. Not until... Uh, sixth grade when I read The Outsiders by Essie Hinton, which yeah. all of you should read, I promise. It's wonderful. And uh, it was the first time when I looked up the author. It wasn't some old dead guy. <laughs> it was a teenage girl. And I thought, wait a minute, if a teenage girl could write books, why couldn't I? So that's when I started writing. There you go. Yeah, it's not just, <laughs> authors aren't just old dead guys. I know. Take hey, that's anything the lesson away from for this. the day, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Now, now I did read I read this in another interview that you thought your first four books were terrible. No, I didn't think my first four were terrible. My first four were absolutely terrible. I mean, they were, they were total garbage. It's written in my will that all four of those first books have to be buried with me. They can never see the light of day. They're the worst. Wow. Well, and why do you feel that way about those books? Uh, you know what? I think it's important to understand, like nobody starts out being a good author. You have to work your way into it. You practice and you write and you get better and better. And then one day you're not terrible. And then maybe one day you're holding a book and it's your name on the cover. So, but I would imagine, like, so after you write one book and you're like, oh, that's terrible, but I'm going to keep going and I'll write another book. And geez, this one's terrible too. By the time you get to the fourth book, how do you encourage yourself to keep going? Well, okay, here's what I do. And, and I think your, um, your uh, viewers are going to understand this, right? Uh, do you ever look back on something you wrote a year ago or two years ago and you're like, this is terrible. Do you see how awesome that is? It means you're getting better. All right? So oh. I would look at, on manuscript number three, I looked at what I wrote for manuscript number two and I could see how much better I was. And so I'd get better and better and, uh, and so that was always encouragement to keep writing. I'm still working to get better. I, so even though all four books you feel are terrible, one is, is, is worse than four. Like four, th there was improvement between them. There was definitely a bottoming out on the number one. <laughs> well, that's good. At least, it was, at least it wasn't the other way around. I know, you know, we want everything to go in the right trajectory, but you know what, it's okay. It's okay to not be a good writer as long as you are still writing. Yeah, and, and that's what I hear from a lot of authors, that it, the most important thing about it is to dedicate yourself to the craft and just keep doing it and yeah, to make just, time to do it every day. Oh, every day is important, right? Because every day it becomes part of the habit. I mean, if you were going to be you know, a basketball star, you should be on the field every day. And if you were going to be a musician, you should be practicing every day. I mean, anything you want to be good at is an everyday process. Absolutely. Wow. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. That's all. Now, and... and those first four books, those were not children's books or, or teen books, is that right? Uh, when I first started out, I thought I was a writer for adults. And, uh, and I think that's part of why I wasn't a great writer then, because I wasn't writing for who I was. I was writing for who I thought I was. And, and when did you come to the realization that who you thought you were was not who you were, and then you embraced who you actually were? All right, it was right before the seventh Harry Potter book came out. Oh. And there was this contest online for, could you write the seventh Harry Potter? Like, could you close all those loops? And I was a huge fan of Harry Potter, and I thought, I want to take the challenge. And so I started writing my own version of a Harry Potter 7. And I mean, it wasn't great, but I fell in love with writing for young people. And that's when I knew all my imagination had come alive. That's when I knew I should be writing for young people, not for adults. It's wonderful that you had that, that experience and that you were, you were brave enough 
to take on a challenge that was outside of your comfort zone. Oh, we have to be always stretching outside our comfort zones. If you only do the thing you're comfortable with, how are you ever going to discover new things and how are you ever going to get better? We <laughs> always go into our no comfort zone. I like how positive you are. Can we get a high five right now? Yes, oh, right. yes, we, okay, Aww. we had a moment. Thank you very much. Now let's talk about your books. All right. Now what's the book we have here? All right, this right here, this is Resistance. It comes out uh, at the end of August. This is based on the true story of Jewish teenagers who said, we will not die on our knees to the Nazis. We are oh. going to fight them. It, this is based on the true story of the Jewish teenagers who fought back. <laughs> right here. How about that? This is the Traitor's Game. The Traitor's Game is, the, is a fantasy. It's the first book in a new series. Uh, this is uh, the story of a girl named Kestra who is being forced by the rebellion to betray her family. And Kestra says, I'm not doing that. And uh, she decides instead to bring down the rebellion. Whoa. The problem is when she realizes the rebellion might be right. And now she has to choose. She can save her family or she can save her country, but she will not be able to do both. We have a list of tongue twisters here. Now the challenge is to read them three times fast. And you can go fast, then faster, and then fastest. All right, but, but if you I have to read each one at least three times. Three times. Now, if I'm going to go fast, faster, and then fastest, I think anyone who is watching this needs to play along to see if they can keep up tempo. I like it. All right, the challenge has been thrown to you, audience. All right. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Number one, Here we're we going go. to go fast. Red leather, yellow leather, faster. Red leather, yellow leather, fastest. We're going to go three times fastest. Red leather, yellow, le yellow, <laughs> well, fail. Red leather, yellow leather, red, yellow, that ah, fail. Red leather, <laughs> yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. I bet ah. you were faster. We're going to go number two, okay, fast. I thought a thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought I thought. Whoa. Faster. I thought a thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought, but fastest three times. Here we go. I thought a thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought. I thought a thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought. I thought a thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought I thought. Whoa. Now, now hold on a second. There's one at the very bottom there. It's, it's my favorite one. All right, this one, fast. One smart fellow, he's felt smart. One more, I think I'm, okay. <laughs> Faster. One smart fellow, he felt smart. Fastest three times. One smart fellow, he felt smart. One smart fellow, he felt smart. One smart fellow, he smelt fart. Yes, you did <laughs> I it. said fart. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody farts. Own it. Be proud of it. That's right. Own your smell. Even monsters fart. Uh, Van, uh, actually. What? what? Oh, come on now. They no, don't hey, need to I'm, know that I fart it. during the interviews. Own it. You sm uh, smart felt fart. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you so much for coming on the show. Van, you are awesome. Thank you. Readers, you are awesome. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being readers. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.